Well, Luffy's really not ready to let go of the going, Mary, and I can't say I blame him that much, uh, as I really feel the same way, but a number of great things happen in this chapter. One Piece, Chapter 328, The Pirate Abduction Incident. Well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome and excellent and long-running tale of One Piece. Our last chapter, of course, saw us finishing off Volume 34, and here we are diving right into Volume 35 headlong. Some very cool-looking characters on the cover here, uh, characters that we've not yet been introduced to. Some of them, obviously, there's Luffy on the cover there. There's Usopp, looks like he uh, has a new uh, slingshot over there, so very cool-looking in, uh, in that respect. And then I don't know who these other characters are in the background, so... Um, I'm assuming that as things heat up over here, we're going to be introduced to some of our uh, some of our enemies, and then of course to uh, the mystery that surrounds the CP9 and uh, and Robin's disappearance. So, nonetheless, though the last chapter left us with just kind of in my mind a big milestone kind of bomb being dropped on us. It was it was the biggest uh, you know bag over the head punch in the face, kick in the nuts, um, at least so far. You know, aside from actually losing a crew member, which which hasn't happened, um, and we found out that the going merry. Uh, it is, is no longer going to be fit for, for travel. And, um, and that it cannot be repaired. It's chance of making it to the next island, even if they tried at 0%, blah, blah, blah. And, <coughs> and that's what we're left with, right? So that's how the volume in the chapter leaves off. That's how things pick up right over here. And we actually get the first couple of pages of Sanji, if you remember, he went off into town to shop for some things. And he goes and he actually sees down, it's kind of neat, because after a couple of chapters of Robin being missing, he goes and he sees... Her talking to this mysterious figure, this, uh, I'm assuming the CP9 character or whatever that had passed by her before, at least it looks like it from a distance. And he sees her talking in this alley and he's like, Robin, Robin, hey! You know, and as he's walking through the city, of course, you know, he's dreaming about all the good things that can happen, you know, maybe going, <laughs> he's dreaming about Nami and Robin and being on a date with both of them. And, you know, I don't care if it sullies the, your image of the characters and everything else. You know what Sanji's thinking. Sanji's thinking of being out with two women and you can fill in the blanks of what he's thinking from above and beyond that. He's not thinking about going out with two women just so he can hang out and ride in boats and be romantic. He's hoping at the end of the night ends up romantically as well. <laughs> so, uh, nonetheless, so as he goes and approaches, uh, she's gone. You know, she's, she's not there. And he winds up burning into Chopper a little bit later on. And Chopper explains how he lost her and everything else. And, and he's like, oh, I thought that was you with her, just in human form. Anyway, they agree they got to get back to the ship. So they're going. They get back to the ship, right? So then it goes and it takes us back to Dock 1 where we were left off, where we were left hanging. And they give us a nice explanation um, of everything that happened. The, the keel is actually the piece that, you know, from uh, from front to back, from uh, stern to whatever. Anyway, from stem to stern, whatever. That um, it, it's, it's the backbone of the ship is what it is. And, and that's actually, it's damaged. It's too badly damaged. It's broken. That's what everything, all the bolts, plates, everything, pieces of wood, planks, everything builds off of that, right? So that's the central support beam that holds this thing together. And they explain that, hey, listen, because then he's like, well, just make me the same ship. And he's like, listen, even if you have blueprints, no two ships are exactly the same, just because of the way wood is, uh, with the grain and everything else. And if we tried to make a duplicate of it, the crew would get on it and would feel that it was a duplicate. They would know that it was just a copy of the real thing, right? It would not have the same spirit as the going merry. And that's how I look at it. I look at it as like this thing is more than just wood and metal and everything else. This thing holds the blood, sweat, tears, dreams, hopes, fears, everything in it. I mean, you think about all the adventure they've been on so far and it's just, just absolutely amazing. I don't know about the time that's taken place. I don't know if it's been a couple of weeks, a couple of months, or a couple of years, but it seems like forever. You know, my journey here has been seven, eight months now. Um, you know, and of course taking it you know, slow and methodical and all that sort of stuff. But man, just it was it was gut wrenching to hear this. So Luffy doesn't want to hear it. Luffy's just like me. He doesn't want to hear it. Uh, I can be very pig headed about things sometimes, and uh, and he doesn't want to hear it. He's just like you know, screw that. No, you know, you guys are idiots type of thing. You know, I want you to fix my ship. I'll ride it until it sinks. You know. So Iceberg even says he goes, and you're the ship's captain. And Luffy says, yeah. And he goes, man, what what an idiot. You know, like I feel bad for the ship. You know, the ship and the crew that you're the captain. You have to know when to fold them, man. You got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to fold them, right? And I think I really think it is that situation for Luffy. He's got to come to the realization that that the Mary is 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 no longer that because because they explained to him. Listen here, with three hundred million berries, you can we could build you another ship. Okay, we could build you a ship. 
you can, and, and then they, Khalifa winds up giving him like this listing of some of the, you know, it's probably like the Craigslist or like the, <laughs> the, the white pages or something, you know, he's like, here you go, take this, the auto finder, the boat finder. And you know, here's some, some boats that are in your, in your price range that you can pick up some ships. And, uh, but like I said, Luffy doesn't want to hear nothing about it. So anyway, he winds up, Iceberg says, listen, you know, our business is done here for right now. Come to me when you want to ship. Simple as that. You know, that's, that's, that's the deal, right? So they wind up going, and then all of a sudden, we're introduced to this other character. He's a really cool-looking dude, and for some reason, I think he talks kind of like this. That's just my opinion. But um, he's this dude. Uh, he's tattooed, tatted up everywhere up here, and his name is Lulu, right? And uh, and he's he's this big dude. He winds up coming over to Iceberg, and he's like, eh, there's somebody from the government here that wants to see you, you know? And Iceberg's like, oh, just tell him I'm not here, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh, okay, then, you know. So this guy winds up coming around the corner anyway with his subordinates. I don't know if this plays in or becomes important at some point, but they introduce the guy formerly as Corgi, this world government official, right? And he wants to meet with uh, with Iceberg. And Iceberg is always seems like, even though he's the mayor, he's always trying to duck his responsibilities. He's trying to shirk them off and what have you. Kind of like a big man-child. Um, you know, but but honestly, really, who wants to go to meetings and things like that? So I can kind of understand where he's coming from and can empathize. But the reason that I've never been in a position of power, you know, <laughs> like a mayor or anything like that, some kind of great leader, is because of the fact that I wouldn't want to attend all these rigorous scheduled meetings and things like that. You know, meet and greets and, you know, interviews and what have you. Nonetheless... He goes off to talk to them because he wants to talk to him on the side. And we wind up getting that uh, that uh, uh, Lulu guy. He winds up going and saying something about... Uh, oh, yeah, that's what it is. He, he sees Kaku, right? And because of the nose and them getting him and Usopp mistaken all the time, he goes and he's like, Hey, I thought I just saw you with the Frankie family. You know, And he's like, what the Frank? What are you talking about, the Frankie family? I wasn't with them, you know? So we wind up through a series of just kind of a funny way of anecdotes and how it's presented and everything like that. He's like, They're like, oh, really? And, and then they're like, oh, maybe you saw Usopp. You saw him with the Frankie family? He's like... Well, he wasn't actually with them. He was sort of being carried off by them. <laughs> like he was being kidnapped, right? <laughs> and they're like, what the hell? So they go, because at first they're like, when they said Usopp was missing in the last chapter, they're like, oh, well, it must be okay. The briefcases are still here with the money. So then Luffy goes and he's like, this seems light, you know? And she's like, what do you mean it seems light? Opens it up and these fuckers duped us and took Usopp and switched out the briefcases too with empty ones, right? And uh, so now obviously their 200 million's gone and Usopp is gone. And, uh, and Luffy's just pissed off. Luffy's pissed off. So he goes and asks where these, where this Frankie family, you know, resides or where they're at or whatever. And he's like, oh, it's, you know, it's so-and-so northeast. And the, it's, it's, it's near, near where you docked, you know. So Luffy just goes taking off because that's what he does, man. Blinders, you know, you, you, you took my money, you took Usopp, I'm going to fuck you up, right? So he's going. He's on his way. Nami takes the, the logical approach and realizes that if she goes with 100 million more berries, because that's what they have left, into the mouth of madness, right, where they're outnumbered and they're outgunned, possibly. They don't know the people, the whatever, you know, this is a new, new place to them. And then goes and demands her 200 million back while she's got 100 million. They're just going to take that, too, you know, so that's how she's looking at it. So she goes and hops back in her Yagara, and she's like, oh, you got to get back to the, got to get back to the ship. I'll get Zoro, and I'll put the money back on the ship, and then I'll get Zoro. He can whip some ass, you know, so she's got faith in him. So as she's riding around and going back through the channel and the waterway, and she winds up coming upon... Uh, she winds up seeing Usopp, right, uh, like off off the waterway and whatnot, and he's he's beaten and battered and bloodied, you know, and he has, still doesn't know about the Mary, of course, you know, so and he he's not going to take it very well at all. I I know that, but anyway, so she sees him over here, all bad and and bloodied and what have you, you know, and Usopp, Usopp, you know, and uh, anyway, so he goes and just like I I can't face the others, you know, because she's trying to explain to him, you know, what's it? Wake up, wake up! Did you get did you get beat up? But he's upset because the Frankie family not only beat him up and he wasn't strong enough to beat them. But they took the money, and he knows that now he won't have the money to fix the Mary, because that's what he's still got in his mind. You know, I can't face the others. I can't, I can't, I can't face the guys, and I love that, you know, and he's she's just like, don't worry about the money, Usopp. We'll get it back without a doubt. So you know that some shit's about to go down over here, because the next chapter is My Name is Frankie. So we're going to meet this fella Frankie that's the head of the Frankie family of, uh, of thugs and, and degenerates that go out and steal from, from pirates, which is... Again, it's kind of a conundrum, you know. It's it's not even like a Robin Hood situation. Like Robin Hood steals from the rich and like the pompous and the you know we have too much and like gives to the poor to help even things out. Like these people steal from the pirates that like and you never know what the pirates the whole deal is. I mean, there's some like the Straw Hats are probably on the better end of the spectrum as far as like being good. They have some morals. They have some values. They do help others. You know what I mean? They've saved uh, you know a couple of fucking countries. One in the sky. One in the desert. You know, one in the Drum Kingdom. So, so they are inherently uh, good as far as a lot of their actions. I know that obviously they operate outside the laws of, of man, outside the laws of the world government. But as far as I'm concerned, what I've seen, I'm not too excited about the world government. Kind of reminds me of the U.S. government. Pretty fucking corrupt. Does whatever they feel like. 
you know, takes, takes, takes from you uh, without ever giving back and just sort of does what they feel like, you know. And I don't know because I've only seen the tip of the iceberg with it, but I, I don't get a great feeling that it's so... I don't get that sense that it's just black and white, that it's good versus evil. I get the sense that, you know, everybody is a little bit little bit corrupt, it seems like, maybe, or, or has some some moral issues. Um, and certainly the government is, is, is not above that just because they're the government, so just my two cents. Anyway, um, my chapter question, though, for you, is, brothers and sisters, is really, what are your thoughts um, on what was explained about the going, Mary? The keel being, uh, you know, being damaged too badly to, to repair. And then, of course, too, um, you know, what are your thoughts not only on that, but Usopp hasn't found out yet. Um, I mean, he's going to flip his shit because this was obviously given from Kaya, um, you know, well, Mary, but, you know, Kaya's servant, Mary, and, um, you know, who he was very close friends with and everything like that from his village, you know. So, man, I just... I shudder to think, um, and like I said, my heart still kind of hasn't gotten over it yet, so um, I still still haven't said goodbye yet in, in my mind um, because the, the Mary's still there. So, But leave your answer to that question in the comments down below. Uh, feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it, um, or possibly just because I told you to. That that also works, you know, kind of subliminal type of thing. You know, hit the thumbs up if you want to do it. Um, and, then, uh, and then, of course, subscribe if you haven't done so already. We will look forward to catching all of you. In the next fun nation. Don't forget to follow me on the Twitter and the Facebook and even my other channel.